Welcome along to Pembrey Circuit in Wales for the penultimate event of the 2012 Pickup Truck Racing Championship. Pembrey, a particularly picturesque circuit and a very exciting racetrack. One and a half miles in length and we've got all the top guns in the pickup trucks ready to fight it out for the championship which looks like it's going to go all the way to Brands Hatch. Let's go down and join Fern Webster though in the panel. We're here at Pembrey with Steve Dance who's actually leading the championship at the moment. Steve, you had qualifying last night. You had a great weekend last time at Snetterton. How are you feeling about this weekend? How did qualifying go yesterday? Yeah, qualifying went very well. Actually, we're quickest in the first session and third quickest in the second. Uh, the track was very slick, especially in the second session. So, um, yeah, it bodes well for today. I'm quite looking forward to it. The car's very good. Uh, temperature was running a little bit high in the car, but I think we've managed to cure that. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get started, really. David, you've been doing it for three years now. It's your third year. How have you been finding the year? Yeah, it's very good. So it's very much part-time now, but no, we're enjoying it. It's a good bunch of lads and the way it's run, really good. So you're actually a really busy man, aren't you? You've been doing a lot of other things. Tell me more about what you do. Yeah, we're actually team manager for Lee Wood with his British Touring Car Championship. So, uh, yeah, it's very much when we're not racing, racing with a touring car, we come out with this. And we also do scrutineering for uh, the national hot rods on a small oval. So. Wow, so you don't get many weekends off then? No, definitely not. This is our house for the summer, so <laughs> that's it, every weekend. This is the penultimate round, but next time you're out at Brands Hatch, you're actually doing that with Lee Woods, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's the last round next weekend for the touring car, so that's it. The, the following meeting, Lee is going to bring the pickup out for its once a year. He was hoping to be here this weekend, but didn't make it. So there going to be any team tactics, any nudging? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, never would be, would we? I'm manager though, that's the thing. <laughs> As the sun comes out, I'm here with Paul Jones, our leading rookie. Paul, how has your season gone so far? Obviously very well, it's your first season and you're leading the rookie championship. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been quite a difficult season for us, you know, because uh, we're learning through the year and finding all our little bits and pieces and our mistakes and everything but we're gradually getting there and uh, you know we're trying to chase the, the good guys uh, but you know it's, it's hard work in our first year and uh, hopefully next year with uh, a new engine uh, we're gonna kind of like hopefully be with the rest of the pack. You used to do some oval racing, how are you finding Pembrey? You know it is totally different from oval racing, it's much faster and uh, you've got to be on the ball all the time. Um, but, you know, it's an absolutely brilliant um, series to be in. And, um, you know, I wouldn't do anything else from uh, pickups. So, you know, that's how it goes. I'm here with Lee Rogers. And how did qualifying go yesterday? Uh, I had a problem in qualifying yesterday. The car didn't feel too bad and then we lost all the brakes. So, um, a little bit excitable, especially around Pembrey here with a big stop at the end of the straight here. So. Um, yeah, we didn't get into the second part of our qualifying, but we've come back, we've found what's wrong, we've, we've changed it, and all being well, we should have some breaks for the first race. So, what got you into this championship? And you've been in it for quite a few years, so why, why do you love it so much? Um, it, it's, it's one of those championships where it is door-to-door -door racing, you know, it's, it's very close. Uh, we got involved after watching uh, the Ascars around Rockingham. We went up there and followed them. They, uh, they were okay, but the pickup stole the show up there. And uh, Dean, my brother, who, who owns this as well, uh, he's the one who got us uh, going down the line to finding the truck and then getting us involved. And like I say, we we did it for a couple of years, and, and we're still still <laughs> still plugging away, trying to stay in the championship. Sort of I'm here with Charlie Weaver, number 20. Before all racing starts, Charlie, I want to ask you a little bit about your past racing experience because you've been doing it since you were 17 years old, is that right? Yeah, well, I started in motocross when I was 17 years old and I um, went through the grades and got up to expert grade and within a couple of years. Um, raced in the British Championship level and even went across to race in America a couple of times. And um, then I had a bit of a bad accident when I was about 34 years old. What adaptations have you had to do to the car? Well, first off, I had to get, be able to get in and out of the truck, and obviously the requirement from the MSA is that you've got to be able to get out of the truck within seven seconds, so you had to pass them tests. So then we put in a motorised um, hand-operated clutch system, um, we modified the pedals, put a hand-operated brake in, and sort of we started testing, and then within a year it sort of all came together and started working. What are your hopes for this weekend? 
Well, it's all, my hopes are always to try to get in the top three, but it doesn't seem to work out that way. But um, obviously we've we, um, got a front row start in the first race, so I have to wait and see what happens. Charlie qualified ninth in the relevant session, and that puts him on pole position. Well, actually outside front pole, because it's Tony Mumford who lines up on pole. Tony qualified in 10th place, and then it's a reverse grid, so the driver that gets the fastest time in qualifying goes to the goes to 10th place, they reverse the fastest 10, but you do get extra points for qualifying, an extra 20 points, that went to championship leader Steve Dancer, on board with Charlie Weaver, lights out, away we go, there's Tony Mumford getting away, as they come down into Hatchet's hairpin for the first time, it's a very good orderly start as we expect from the trucks, and from the fastest part of the circuit to the slowest, Hatchet's hairpin, now driving standards absolutely key to any first corner here, particularly with the reverse grid, Charlie having a few problems as we can see, I think he's got back on track, but we're on board with Nick Grindrod. He's one of the main championship contenders. Remember, won the Motors TV 100 at Rockingham. If you watched last lap earlier in the season, you might well recall the programme we had there, which was 100 miles of racing at Rockingham on the Super Speedway. Through into the lead goes Paul Tompkins, past Tony Mumford, into second place. Anthony Hawkins in white. Looks like it's going to be a change for third as well. Michael Smith in 93 goes through. Tony Mumford getting high out to drive a clatter as Charlie Weaver forces his way past Lee Rogers in truck number 69. Rogers demoted. We've got Paul Jones coming up as well in the light blue 82 truck. So that's the beauty of reverse grid racing. Some of the guys who have perhaps got their trucks a little bit more switched on will start to work their way through the top 10. So the, the truck's the only formula in the UK that races on oval and the big American style oval and circuit racing. It's a very good mixture. And that's why the drivers are in left-hand drive, the outside of the circuit here, as they go down into Hatches for the second time. The car on the outside is 22. Nick Grindrod second in the championship. Pass Michael Smith. There was contact there between Phil White and Smith. We're looking at the front end of Phil White's car. Now, is he going to give Nick a little tap as well? That won't have been an intentional bang there from Phil White. He's not that kind of driver, but he does like to get as close as possible. You see how the camera angle from the rear of Nick Grindrod's 22 car shows us how close this racing is. Pembrey, a wonderful circuit for these trucks. They raced here earlier on in the season. In fact, had their opening three races at Pembrey. We've got two for you this weekend. It's a 25 race championship. And this is the view from one of the drivers we spoke to, Steve Dance, quadruple champion in pickup trucks. One in 2011, 2010, 2007 and 2003. Well over 40 career wins now for Steve Dance in the 16 truck as we look at Michael Smith coming under pressure from Dance down the inside into Hatchet. Very clear move there, got on the got on the brakes a little bit later but made his move nice and early. Hatchet's a marvellous corner for these pickups because it's so tight and a lot of these guys have got short oval racing experience so they're well used to chucking a car into a very tight corner. Dave Longhurst in 23 former hot rod world champion as you heard in the interview still very much involved in all sorts of motor racing as joint chair with his wife carol of the national hot rod promoters association and team manager for lee wood in the british touring cars now the top runners in the championship are also carrying ballast you get 30 kilos of ballast for a win up to a maximum of 70. 20 kilos for second place in a race, 10 kilos for third, and if you finish outside, then you take 10 kilos off. Here they come then, side by side here, Phil White in the Denham Car Centre, black truck down the inside of Anthony Hawkins. This is the view from Steve Dance. White's going to clatter his way through, and Dance is coming offline as well. 3-1 as he comes down into the hairpin, he thinks better of it. Phil White's got the position though, and Dance, look how hard they are onto the brakes, into hatches. That's why there are people watching there. Anthony Hawkins gets a little bit crossed up on the way out, but... Lose the power, oh, Paul Jones is out, the Surrey Bay scaffolder, rookie championship leader. That's going to be a big dent in his championship points. But back to Phil White in 63, leading, not leading the race, but he's ahead at the moment of Steve Dance. This is the man second in the championship we're on, on board with, Nick Grinder on. He's also second in the race. Paul Tompkins in number 12, had a good run here. And Tompkins leaves the door open and Nick Grinder on through. Nick Grindrod goes through the 22 truck, hasn't had a race win since Rockingham round 16, but he wants to put that right this weekend as we look back at the A4 metal car of Paul Tompkins. Both of these guys cut their teeth oval racing. Nick Grindrod went into Westfield sports car racing after 
serving an apprenticeship in Grand Prix Midgets where he was uh, one of the top drivers, didn't win the overall championship, but won many individual titles and he certainly proved his mettle as a circuit racer, as we said, in the Westfields, in Legends cars, as well as now in the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. Rockingham champion as well, Nick Grindrod, going back over the years, 2005 and 2006 champion. He's got ahead of Paul Tompkins, who is, compared to Nick, I've got to say, a relative newcomer, but proving himself very, very quickly, Paul Tompkins. Won at Rockingham last year. And there's problems for David O'Regan, the youngest driver in the field, the 21-year-old from County Court. Looks like an engine problem. Back we go, Anthony Hawkins. There is 93, Michael Smith. Michael actually one of the uh, younger drivers in the championship. 37 years old. The average age is 45 in the championship. And I think the uh, drivers will probably thank me for pointing out that statistic. But Michael putting pressure at the moment on Anthony Hawkins. Lee Rogers goes past Tony Mumford, 72 trying to go through as well. That's a newcomer to the championship this year, James Goldstraw. And there goes Steve Dance past Phil White, a very emphatic move as they go down into the hairpin. You can see it was a late move out. Pulled over, I think he sold White a dummy. Cracking stuff here from the pickups at Pembrey.